I had to wrap up our series on how to be a better hunter. I, this week I want to talk about hunting equipment. Now, snipers in the military, we run with the best optics, the best rifles, best gear available. Um, you can do the same thing. You want to be a better hunter, right? We've talked about mastering your rifle and ammo. We've talked about camouflage. We've talked about movement. Let's get into stuff that, that all of y'all want to spend your money on. You want the latest and greatest equipment, but I want you to buy it for the right reasons. So this week, guys, we're going to talk about new equipment to help make you a better hunter. <laughs> All right, hey guys, first off, I want to thank Sportsman's Guide. They've hooked us up with uh, all kinds of stands and uh, tents and just all, all kinds of hunting gear, and uh, that, which is cool because it makes it easier for me to share with you guys what the latest and greatest stuff is that's out there. All right, so what we're going to do today is this is part four in our video, How to Hunt Like a Sniper. And uh, today I want to focus on equipment, right? Now, our snipers are the best in in the world because well because they get the best training but also because they have the best equipment i, I want to start off with uh with optics to begin with right um when you're looking at optics you want to get the best glass that you can afford right now a mil spec like my smith and bender it, yeah night force scopes leopold military scopes they are built to be bomb proof guys you can literally jump out of an airplane at 27,000 feet in the dark and get hit in the face with a planet. Land hard, wreck your parachute, everything, and your scope is still fine. I know this because I've done it, all right? Uh, these scopes on these rifles, mill spec, you know, seals can lock out of submarines with them. They can hit the beaches, they can do everything. All this stuff, guys, if you're that rough on your hunting equipment, you're a bad son of a gun, because uh, I'm not. I, I'm a fag now, former action guy. So all I care about is high quality gear that I can go on nice hunts with and train with, okay? So uh, don't. I'm, what I'm saying is you don't necessarily have to go mill spec. You don't, but go with high quality glass, good high density glass that's made in Japan. All right, that, that's what I recommend. Um, this Nikon's got great high density glass in it. Um, even, uh, some of your more affordable companies like uh, Primary Arms. This is the pri uh, Primary Arms, this is their Platinum Series. This is their top of the line, a little higher priced series. But again, this is high density Japanese made glass, all right? So now why is that important, uh, having good glass? Well, guys, because it transmits light better. What does this equate to for you and me as a hunter? Remember, you've got all those nocturnal animals we're hunting, that, that big trophy buck. It's getting ready to go take off for the whole day. It's only out during the night. So your best time to get these trophies is early in the morning and late in, later in the evening. The better glass you got, the better it transmits light. People say gather light. It doesn't actually gather light. It transmits light. But you go with a larger objective lens and high quality glass, it's going to allow you to shoot those animals earlier in the morning, and it's going to allow you to shoot those animals safely later in the evening. And guys, that's what it comes down to, right? But it's not just rifle scopes. If you're out scouting, you've got to be able to see that trophy animal. Remember, you're hunting. You're you're ambushed you're laid up you're ready to find that animal and if you can spot that animal before he spots you it's going to greatly increase that uh that chance of you getting a confirmed kill so you always bring in your rifle up and moving your rifle around you remember we talked about that in our last video which was on movement right that's uh the Mammals' eyes are drawn to movement. They're, that's going to bust your position. So you don't need to. You don't want to be swinging that rifle all around. So it's better to have a good set of high-quality binos that you can uh, that you can pan around with, right? That you can look through the binos. Again, again, guys, you don't have to have big ship-to-shore binos. You don't have to have monster binos. Get a uh, a good six, eight, maybe even 10 power binos, get good high quality glass 
And what it's gonna allow you to do is you're gonna be able to look deeper into those shadows and you're gonna be able to see that buck right before he cuts across the corner of the field. He's only gonna be out there a couple of seconds. You've got to spot him before he's gone, you do. So um, I'm a big fan of having binos or even just a small little monocular that you can hang on a, a lanyard around your neck. Keep it tucked inside that winter parker and pan around with it, all right? Now, um, guys, I want you to buy top of the line equipment uh, because you need it, not just because it looks cool. And uh, here's an example of that. Most of your modern uh, high dollar scopes, they come with this big tube at the end. Uh, this is called the kill flash. What, it, what it's designed to do is screw onto the end of the barrel. And what it does is it keeps uh, the sun from reflecting off your objective lens and the animal seeing it or an enemy sniper seeing it in the case of military guys. So I'm all about having a tube over the end of your, your tube. However, can you see that? Now we talked about this in our camouflage class. What is that? Guys, that's a perfect circle. There's no such thing as a perfect circle in nature. So why would I spend all this extra money for a perfectly milled, jeweled edged uh, tube to put over the end of my scope. I don't do that, guys. You know what I do? I take, uh, and again, I'm, I'm used to using a piece of cardboard from an MRE. Why? Because, well, because I was in the military. Sloppy Joe filling. Yeah. All right, guys, you take that piece of cardboard and run it up over your scope. I'm gonna go up over the other end and get the center opened up. Run it through. Guys, and then take that front end and crumple that shit up. What it's gonna do is you're still getting enough light coming through the end of it. It is not obscuring the end of your scope. Guys, you're gonna be able to see through that clear. The sun's not gonna reflect off of it. Now, which one's gonna stick out in mother nature? There's not a single thing natural in nature that's perfectly round, all right? This is just another leaf out there in the forest, all right? Take this from me. I've done lots of sniper stalks in a number of different sniper schools. I've done lots of live sniper operations and even more training sniper ops. Camouflage is everything, guys. So, I, again, I'm not saying... Uh, if you want to spend your money on it, spend your money on it. Uh, a lot of your high, uh, high quality scopes come with them. Uh, for example, the, the Platinum Series here, um, it does come with it. Again, Primary Arms, this is an awesome scope, guys. It, it really is. Comes with it, no extra charge. I just wouldn't use it. Right? So, again, that's just me. I'm all about using every technological advantage that we can get. Right? So, for example, trail cameras. Now, there are different kinds of trail cameras. They've got some that run off the memory cards. They've got some modern ones now that are cellular. If all you can afford are the ones with the memory cards in them, just run the ones with the memory cards. But uh, if you can get a cellular one, um, guys, that's letting you do real-time uh, Intel updates because if you're not just gathering pictures of the animals. What you're doing is you're looking for time and direction that those trophy animals are showing up because this allows you to, just like we do in the military, our intel analysts, what they'll do is they'll do pattern analysis on that target. Doesn't matter whether it's a two-legged terrorist or whether it's that trophy uh, deer or elk bull that you're after, all right? Um, you need to do pattern analysis. Use, you got trails cameras are awesome. On that same note, again, use all the, uh, use all that technology that's available to you. Now, you guys are used to seeing satellite imagery, right? When you pull up Google Maps, you can zoom in and not just street signs, but it'll let you see all the satellite imagery. That's fine, um, but we're on all that big green forest. Where's that ravine? Where's that cliff? I'm not real big on that, guys. So what I use is there's other programs you can keep on your phone. Right? Again, this is not just for talking on. This is a uh, this is a handheld computer, guys. We'll let it load up. Right, now I can go to I can go to satellite imagery just like Google Maps. Right? I go to satellite imagery, 
and I can pull up all the satellite imagery you got on Google Maps. That's fine, but when I start planning my terrain analysis, my ways to, intel, uh, to infill, remember we talked about movement, you have to plan your routes. I go back and I pull up US government topographic maps, and I can actually zoom in and I can see where that cliff is before I fall off it in the middle of the morning when I'm trying to get to that deer, uh, that deer stand before the sun comes up. You can, uh, so again, it's, it's, an, it's an app for your phone. It's not that expensive. Where else can you get, uh, where else can you get topographic maps? Guys, you can download them off the internet. I just like using uh, Gaia GPS. Uh, having the maps and everything is great for planning uh, fruit, uh, future hunts. It really is. Now, once you've downloaded that software, you've got it on your PC, uh, you downloaded the maps for your area, you've decided what hunt you're going to, or what farm you're going to hunt on, what public land you're going to hunt on, whatever it is, make yourself what's, what we call a goss in the military, a grid overhead sketch. Lay it out and actually mark where, uh, where the trails are, where... Uh, they come different times of the day. If you're going to be hunting as a group, for example, when we do Operation Bloodbath, opening day rifle season here in Kentucky, now I have it marked out on the satellite imagery ahead of time where each hunter is going to be, right? And uh, what it allows us to do is everybody can plan it out ahead of time. You get those guys that show up the last minute and you can just hand them the goss, the grid overhead sketch, and now they can see where everybody else's locations are. Guys, we get in depth. We put sectors of fire, everything. Why? Because we're running it like a military ambush. Good stuff, All right? Um, now, it's good because you can see like deer go by and they're outside a range of you, but you can look on that goss and say, all right, Bob, Tom, whoever is over there, you can send them a quick, a quick text message. Hey man, you've got uh, such and such trophy buck coming in from, coming in from the side. Right. Um, it also helps with coordinating link-ups and telling guys, hey, look, I need three or four guys to come help me dress this monster out. So we're like, we'll run numbers down one side, letters down the other. Hey, meet me at Alpha Alpha Zero One. And they can triangulate on your goss, and now we've got our link-up plan. I right, plan this stuff, guys. Plan it. Hey, um, I've got so much more equipment to share with you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop real quick. Why? Because... If I don't stop for commercial break, YouTube's going to put them in in mid-sentence. And uh, this way, it's an opportunity for me to screw with YouTube. I'll see you guys back in a minute. All right, hey, guys. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that commercial break. I know I did. All right. Um, hey, so uh, next I want to talk about uh, communications. You know, uh, you got to ask yourself, while well, you're out there hunting, uh, is that cell phone going to work for you? Right? People have been... Uh, just come to rely so much on their cell phones. Now, you might get a little bit more range with texting, stuff like that. And, and texting is great for sharing intel with the other hunters without talking. But guys, if you're in a, a dead area that has zero cell phone signal, you're going to have to look for something else besides your cell phone. Uh, MGRS radios, uh, there's lots of great small handheld radios out there. Um, small little walkie-talkies. Some of them have got good range. Some of them have got bad range. Now remember, uh, if you get the higher powered, more expensive ones that tell you they can get 25 miles, guys, that's 25 miles with both of you standing on tippity tops of different mountains. These things are line of sight, all right? So if you're down in a ravine uh, and you've, or you've got a uh, cliffs on both sides of you just understand you're not going to get a good signal don't freak out just means you're going to have to climb the high ground and then you can get out there and get that get that uh, communication signal through to the other guys that you're hunting with now you can get headsets for these uh, bone mics so that you can just whisper the animals aren't going to hear you you see them using them on all the uh, all the hunting shows all right um, videos where they're actually shooting bambi in the face Right, uh, lots of good stuff like there uh, uh, for uh, comm setups. There's lots of good stuff. You might as well make the advantage of all this technology. Now, the other good stuff for you to use to spot those animals uh, before they even come into your sector there. Now, a, a lot of places you can't hunt with uh, night vision devices. You can't hunt with thermals. They have restricted hours for hunting. But uh, I still like using, this is a, a military PVS-14. 
Uh, this is a Gen 3 Ghost White Phosphor. Uh, it's a awesome, uh, it's auto-gated, it runs off of a AA battery. Uh, it takes up very little space. Now, um, it, when you're using uh, when you're using nods, they are, you know this because this gives me a technological edge over the animals. Remember, they're already set up to be nocturnal. A lot of them are, right now. Um, I also have thermals. This is a small thermal breech made by uh, made by FLIR. They're, again, they're both roughly the same size. Now there are pros and cons of each one of these thermals versus Gen 3s. Now. Um, you can mount it on your head, right? And uh, it's good for moving to the stand, right? You, you can put it on a little head harness and it's good for you to walk so you don't have to use that flashlight when you're getting to that stand. Remember we talked about in movement, you want to stalk up to your stand. Don't let the animals know that you're there. You're trying to ambush them. So having that night vision device to allow you to get there is letting you get there a lot safer. It really had. Now, once you've gotten to your stand, you can take it off, just hang it. It's got holes for putting it on a lanyard. And every once in a while, scan the areas and you'll see, holy cow, the sun's not even, not even up yet. And I've got four big bucks coming across the field. Cool, cool stuff. Now, the advantages of thermals are that they allow you to see uh, the heat of the animal. So uh, if they're all through a thick wooded area, a lot of times with the Gen 3s, the image intensifiers, you're, you can't see the animal because the animal's moving real slow, but you can bring up the thermal look through the thermal and even even that little field mouse just jumps right out at you. Uh, they're, they're pricey, right? They are, but it does give you a technological edge. It really does. Um, weapon mounted versions, uh, for those of you that like to hog, uh, hog hunt or coyote hunt, you can mount uh, this. This one happens to be a thermal. You can mount it. Uh, they make some that are just dedicated. You can set up your own gun just with that to use at night, or this particular model is the Apollo. It is designed to be mounted in front of your day optic. You have to have a rail on your stock to mount it, but uh, it doesn't change the zero of your weapon once you get it laid in, perfect. Great for hunting hogs, uh, awesome stuff. The, another advantage of using thermals, like this is a small thermal that I keep, I actually keep it on my gun belt out at the range. The advantage of this nice little thermal, besides I can film video with it, uh, if you lose that animal, you know, you're hunting late evening or late afternoon, and you're trying to follow the blood trail, you can't find it, uh, bring that thermal out and look, and you'll be panning around. I have walked right by huge hogs with a flashlight, not seen them. And then as I was walking away, I had my buddy with the thermal go, dude, there's something really hot laying on the ground. You just walk past and I'm like, it, it's not there. I just looked and I'll go back and look again. Sure enough, uh, the hog was right there. So these thermals are great for doing that. Now, um, again, gives you the edge at night before you're getting to your stand or coming back. But one thing that is awesome for hunters trying to uh, hunt like a sniper is using a good laser range finder. Uh, again, this is my laser range finder. I covered this when we were talking about mastering your gun. Right? Um, this is the SIG Kilo 2400 ABS. It's got the applied ballistic software in it. You can get 2,400 yards with it against a reflective target, but you'll easily get 1,000 meters, sometimes a little more than that, with a uh, unreflective target. Feel how light this thing is. Guys, this is what I'm usually hanging around my neck when I'm out hunting, because what I'm doing is it's still got good, uh, good glass, so I'm still able to use it as a, a monocular, using it to spot for deer, and then when I spot that deer out in the field, I can quickly hit the button and it immediately gives me that range and I can start uh, working my ballistic formula to get that, so, uh, get that solution so I can engage the target very, very quickly. All right, uh, once you've got the laser, uh, laser range finders, if you want to invest in a wind meter, I, guys, I'm, I'm here to tell you, you've mastered that rifle, part one of this uh, series on how to be a better hunter. Step one, master your rifle. So if you've got a rifle that can shoot a two inch shot group at 500 meters, doesn't do you any good if you uh, miscalculate the wind and miss it by 36 inches. It doesn't matter how big of a shot group you shoot, you still miss the animal, right? So uh, 
investing in a wind meter, investing in the ballistic software for your phones. I run Applied Ballistics. It's a, a program that you can download for your phone. Remember, this is a handheld computer. I have all the data for my different guns in here, uh, whatever kind of caliber, whatever kind of ammo I'm running for that gun. All right, and then from there, I, calc uh, it, I get my environmental conditions, I plug it in, wind direction, distance to target, wind speed, barometric pressure, temperature, all this data quickly gets input, and I get my ballistic solution to engage that target. All right, good stuff. Now, um, I want to talk about support. I'm, I'm not talking about some prayer group for you to sit down with and uh, make you feel better about missing that big buck. That's not the kind of support I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is uh, being able to support the gun. Right? Now, that can be everything from, uh, from a nice tree stand, uh, the, the, the rail on the front of your tree stand. It can be a nice bipod on the front of the gun, like the Atlas bipod. Right? Uh, it can be this nice, uh, this nice tripod underneath the gun here. Right, this one is the Reaper tripod made by Kampf Jagger. This is what military snipers run with. Guys, this is a stable shooting platform. All right, so if all you're used to using is the shooting sticks that you get out of the Cabela's catalog, uh, guys, don't get me wrong, it's better than you just shooting standing offhand. But remember, the better support that you have, the better you practice with that support, uh, it's going to make you much more accurate shot. All right, so I like the Atlas bipods. You can lay them out at 45 degrees forward, back. I can do pan and tilt, and I, I love my Reaper tripod. I really do. All right, so we've covered a lot of gear, a lot of equipment, which is awesome, All right? Um, so I'm going to stop right here before I get into cold weather gear. All right, and uh, before I get into cold weather gear, let's do one more commercial so YouTube uh, doesn't hit me in the middle of mid-sentence. I'll see y'all back in a minute. Okay, right, so I've covered a lot of technology. I've covered a lot of gear, right, but one of the biggest things that uh, you know people don't really think about a lot is cold weather because the reality is, is you're sitting there in a hide site, and whether you're a military sniper up on the mountain of Afghanistan, or whether you're a hunter that's sitting up in a tree stand, you got the wind coming by and everything. Right, guys, you've got to have good cold weather gear. All right? uh, if you're cold, then you move around, and remember, those mammals, they, they see movement, they really do. So um, you, you've got to have good cold weather gear. Everybody thinks just the clothing, and I'll put extra layers of, uh, insulated underwear, long johns, everything else, uh, 12 different layers of polypropylene. I got that, but again, they've been doing that for 200 years, dressing in layers, and you should, I agree with that, but let's use some of the technology that's available today. All right, uh, this is made by uh, HME. I, I, again, I got it, Sportsman's Guide. Guys, this is one of those little backup battery chargers that everybody carries for their cell phones. And it's got the little light on it, just like all of them do. But guys, and you can, and you can recharge your phone with it, but this thing is a hand warmer. You turn it on and it's got two different heat settings and you can put this thing in your pocket. If your cell phone goes dead, you can then hook it up. Guys, you'll get all day hunts out of this thing. Charge it up. It takes about three hours to get it to uh, full charge, but uh, I, stick it in your pocket. It's not like the old ones where uh, you, you had to put a, a burnable fluid in it and it basically just smoldered all day long in your pocket, giving off gas, by the way. It's not making any noise and uh, it does, puts off enough heat. You know, so you don't have to clip two nine volt batteries together and toss them in your pockets anymore. So anyways, uh, awesome way to do it, right? And we've been using hand warmers for decades now, the chemical hand warmers. They, walk, they work good, but uh, you know, it, this is modern age here. Use electricity where available. Now, uh, my problem that I had was, um, I caught frostbite on four toes in ranger school. I, Suck, no fun at all. But what I now what happens is the temperature drops below 50 degrees. I lose all circulation in my feet. My feet get cold and clammy. 
Uh, so what I use is, and I spend the best money on the best insulated boots. I've got some Irish Setter hunting boots that are like 600 grams of insulation in them. They're awesome. But uh, once I get to my stand, these are called boot blankets. All right, they've got space blanket material inside of them. They're camouflaged on the outside. They're, uh, they, they're padded on the bottom to keep your feet off of those cold uh, metal tree stands. And when I get to my stand, I can put hand warmers, the chemical hand warmers in here, put these over the top of my boots. And guys, I've got some of the uh, coldest feet that anybody's gonna have because I'm a prior cold weather injury. And if these things are keeping my feet nice and toasty, they're gonna work for you, right? Now, um, 10,000 different patterns out there on camouflage clothing. Uh, get the camouflage patterns that work best for your area. We've covered all that in part two of this video, which was on camouflage. You can find it in our video archive. Um, get good insulated jackets. Now, there are, um, there are parkers out there that are made out of Gore-Tex. So if it's raining, sleet, snow's melting, I love Gore-Tex. And what it does is it'll, you know, it sheds the water. Uh, but a lot of your military Gore-Tex, it, it's loud. Shh, 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 shh. When, you, when you're moving the material, people are gonna hear that. This is that nice uh, micro fleece. You can't hear the, uh, you can't hear this stuff. It doesn't make any noise in the woods. But uh, what this is right here, it's called the IWOM, I-W-O-M. And what it stands for is um, interior warmth, outer, uh, outer mobility. Right? It's got a nice, it's a, it's a nice pullover um, parka. It's got a nice hood. It's even got the face mask that comes around the side so that, the, uh, it holds all your scent in, blocking the scent. That's important. We all got that, right? It's got, uh, it's got your waterproof zippers. It's got everything you need. It's got the snow hood to go over the top. It's got pockets for, uh, it's got pockets for your, um, for your gloves. And it's even got the nice kangaroo pocket on the front. Everybody likes this. That's where I keep my electric hand warmer, by the way, right? Uh, nice, great high quality parker except this thing is not just a parker you can pop a strap on it and it actually unrolls all the way down and you can zip up the bottom and now you've got now you're in, completely enclosed inside of a sleeping bag right it's basically built like a sleeping bag this thing is awesome waterproof it traps all the heat all your body heat, it traps all the scent. It is rated for 40 degrees down to negative 40 degrees. Now, why do I say 40 degrees? Why don't I say 80 degrees? Because this puppy is too hot. Now, the cool part about it is it actually rolls all up into a nice little, uh, little like backpack, fanny pack that you can wear. Once you get out there, you know, you're not hot, put it on like a Parker. It's a nice Parker. Put it on like a nice parker, right? And then once you get into the stand, drop the bottom of it, zip it up, and uh, it's gonna keep you warm. Gents, in Operation Valkyrie, I wore this thing in the dark, uh, I wore this thing out every night. Didn't use a sleeping bag, this is what I stayed in. You get yourself a couple hand warmers, toss them inside this thing, and you'll be roasting. The only, I had to get out of it during guard duty, it was just too hot. Now, I want that to sink in because I brought this out kayaking, and the problem with being out in the cold like that, you slip into the water, somebody can get hurt from hypothermia really, really fast. And by laying this thing out like a sleeping bag, you could toss a couple chemical hand warmers in it or electric hand warmers, and uh, you would quickly restore the guy's body temperature. You'd get him up really, really quick. So uh, again, it's, it's called the IWOM. Uh, it's awesome, dude. I, I really, God, I wish I had this thing up on the mountain in Afghanistan during the initial invasion of, of Afghanistan. 2001, 2002, we froze our butts off up on the mountain. It would have been great to have that. So uh, anyways, uh, that's enough for right now. I've got, uh, I've got, I got YouTube telling me it's time for another commercial break. So what we're gonna do is, I'm saving the best stuff for last. I'll see you guys after the next commercial.
All right, guys, welcome back from that commercial break. Hey, I, I want to talk about hides, you know, I, by all the camouflage, everything else, but understand, uh, you know, it's better to have a hide site that allows you to move around a little bit. All right, so when you're looking at ground blinds, smaller is better than bigger in a lot of times. So uh, like a lot of turkey hunters will use the little, just to fold out walls or even the mirrored panels work great because then the camouflage matches perfect because you're reflecting that uh, camouflage right back at them. Just you have to make sure you've got the angle on the mirrored hides perfect because you've got it lean back too much. You're actually showing them the blue sky and then that's literally you've got a blue sky rectangle right there in the middle of the woods it's not going to blend in at all now when you start looking at pop-up tents like this one's uh, made by guide gear i picked it up from can you say it sportsman's guide right guys this thing is a taj mahal right obviously it would take six months to put this thing together nada the cool hood i've never seen one pop up this fast it goes up faster than my little rinky dink one here right it, it does it uh Great hide site. It's got plenty of room so you can bring that young son out there with you or a hunting buddy, right? Um, when you start talking about stands, different kinds of stands, you've got your, your ladder stands, right? Um, and there's all different kinds of ladder stands. The problem with ladder stands is guys, you're exposed and this ladder is, a uh, ladder's gonna, uh, it's gonna give your position away, right? You wanna get as high as possible in that stands, what you wanna do. now. Climbing stands are great. I've got my climbing stand way up top if you pan way up top on it. Guys, this is the telephone pole. We're sitting at the 100 meter line on at the tactical rifleman range complex and we actually shoot from these stands. It's the reason why we're filming here is this is where I'm used to parking my truck here on the range, All right? But you notice right here, I've got my new one. This this one's also made by Guide Gear. This is called the extreme comfort stand it's a freaking lounge chair and it's quiet and the padded bar is stable because that's what i'm going to be resting my weapon on so anyways uh, you've got lots of options when you're doing stands if you're going to use a hanging stand just remember there's two different ways to get up there that's the screw in steps which actually damage a lot of trees and then you can use the strap on legs like what we have here um, that you strap them onto the tree they're, uh, they're stable, they're easy to climb up on, a lot safer than your screw-in steps. But uh, again, there are no straight lines in nature and uh, th those are target indicators that the animals are gonna see, All right? So on that note, uh, how are you gonna place these things? And it doesn't matter whether you're using a big tripod stand or uh, a ladder stand, anything, or whether you're using an enclosed tripod stand or a little building out in the middle of the cornfield. The key is to place them as early in the year as possible because the deer are going to find them. I don't care what color you uh, what color you paint this thing, what camouflage pattern you use. The animals know their yard. They know their they know where they live and they're, they're gonna spot this thing immediately. They're gonna spot it immediately. So don't, uh, don't think you popping up something camouflaged is gonna keep them from seeing it. You need to get it there and let them get used to it. All right, so place them early in the season. Uh, watch your scents, watch the winds, stay, uh, stay downwind of them, and uh, you know, just get them in there and place them, or, uh, place more than, uh, more than just one. Plant as many as you can, and here's why. If I'm gonna use the Taj Mahal here, is if I'm gonna use this as my primary uh, hunting uh, stand, right, my, my nice little, um, uh, my nice little pop-up tent, I'm gonna go plant other ones out in different locations. I'm doing that at, so that they're decoys, right? Um, and I'm also have alternates in case the winds change directions. I've got other positions that I can go to. But the big thing is I'll put them up as uh, decoys, right? That the animals will get used to them, but only to a point. Now you start, uh, next thing I want to cover is scent management. There's all kinds of great clothing that, uh, that you can buy that will block your scent from getting out. Now, unless you're going to be in a Ziploc plastic bag like, um, 
like the old uh, Warsaw Pack chemical suits. No, uh, you can't do that. You'll be just sweating so much in it. So understand, you're still giving off scent. So a lot of your scent blocker outfits are made with a charcoal lining. They absorb your scent. Now, that said, they're only gonna absorb so much. They won't help me, me and my sniper team in Afghanistan because I'm up there for a week. They'll only hold so much scent before the then ineffective. To reactivate that charcoal, you've got to wash them, all right? Uh, you guys know the deal. Neutralize, prevent, all right? Now, when it comes to scents, a lot of other people like to use an attractant, that buck lure, that buck urine, uh, doe urine, uh, to, to drive the bucks nuts and bring them in. Now, understand, when you uh, use that lure, that attractant, that buck is immediately going He's becoming alert because he's now looking for that female. He's becoming more alert. It's gonna be harder for you to ambush him. So uh, it's a double-edged sword there. I kind of want him lazy passing by going to that next spot. So I'm not real big on using attractants. What I do like to use though are cover scents. They work just like a decoy does, uh, except you're trying to block scents where I'm using decoys doing sniper ops overseas uh, it works the same way, just uh, a lot of these animals have got more sensitive scent glands, all right? So um, the cover scents, uh, you can use natural, uh, you can use uh, natural earth, you can use pine scents, this, that, and the other, or, or go extremes. I like to use skunk uh, cover scents. It actually smells like a skunk, and it does. It helps cover the human scent in the area. Now, there are other people, some areas you're allowed to actually bait Right, if you're gonna bait, ba baiting's great for getting hogs, it's great for getting those guys, but you're, you're not gonna bring that smart buck in, you're really not, right? Um, one last thing I wanna touch on is infill platforms. A lot of guys like to ride their ATVs in. Guys, it's great for hauling out uh, your equipment, it's great for dragging the deer out, but they're, they are loud infilling. Uh, the muffler systems on ATVs, Hunters can hear other hunters infilling. Deer have much more sensitive ears. Elk have much more sensitive ears. They're gonna hear them. So you wanna get in using stealth. I want you to look at the electric bikes, all right? Uh, they're very, very quiet. You can still come in, park them a little ways away from your stand. Don't forget to camouflage them. Make sure they're downwind. All right, so gents, um, hunting mammals is hunting mammals, all right? Um, you can go out, you can just be that FUD hunter, but basically you're gonna get all the stupid ones all day long. You're gonna get the does and the young bucks. But if you want to really get that trophy, you wanna get that, uh, that, that animal you've been waiting for that long time, that high value target, uh, you've gotta be the baddest sniper in the valley. You, you really have to. So uh, again, thanks for watching. And uh, you, you really want to learn how to use all this stuff, come take a class with us. You can check out all the details for that at tacticalrifeman.com. And thanks again to Sportsman's Guys for sponsoring us with a lot of this hunting equipment here. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything.